Johnny Dollar. This is George Caldwell, Mr. Dollar. Caldwell? That's right. I'm in charge of the Office of Amalgamated Life Association here in Meridian, Mississippi. Oh, I see. Yes, sir. And I'm certainly glad I caught you. What can I do for you, Mr. Caldwell? Well, I understand that you've been given top security clearance. That's right, sir. I have. Good. Our client was certain you have, and that's uh, why he asked that you be called in on this, this problem of his. Who is the client? His name is Dr. Emmett Melcher. Yes? Yes. He is head of the Melcher Laboratories here in Meridian. He does a great deal of work for the government. I see. And he's most anxious that you lose no time in getting down here to see him. Sounds pretty important. I'm certain it is. What's it all about, Mr. Caldwell? I don't know. What? The only thing I'm sure of is that whatever it is, it's top secret. All right. I'll get there as quickly as possible. The CBS Radio Network brings you Mandel Kramer in the exciting adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Amalgamated Life Association Meridian Office. Following is an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the Philadelphia Miss matter. Expense account item one, 8160, cab to Bradley Field and plane fare to Meridian, Mississippi. Making connections wasn't as easy as I'd hoped. I had a stopover in New York, another in Atlanta, Georgia, so it was nearly 7 p.m. by the time I landed in the busy railroad and manufacturing center with its stockyards and business in cotton, tobacco, fruit, poultry, and lumber. In the hopes that Caldwell might still be waiting for me at his office, I grabbed a taxi. That's item two, a buck 85. Okay, buddy, where to, huh? You know the address of the Amalgamated Life Building? Are you kidding, buddy? I know this town like the back of my hand. Where'd you say you want to go? Amalgamated Life Association. Say it again, huh? Just once more. Amalgamated Life. I know it. I know it. The minute you open a yap of yours, hiya, Johnny. Johnny? Sure. I don't get it. You mean you don't recognize me? I'm afraid not. You kidding? I drove you halfway all over New York City one night when I was waking up there. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was a couple of years ago. You was chasing some crook from all the way down to Pier 27 all the way up to the Bronx. That's my old hometown. Sure, you're Johnny Dollar. Remember remember how much help I was helping you run down that crook that time? My name is Bernard York. You just call me Bernie. <laughs> All right, Bernie. Yeah, boy, I sure remember that big fat tip you gave me that night. Hey, it kept me eating steak for a week. And now you listen, Johnny. Yes, Bernie. You need any more help? I mean, down here, you just give me the buzz. Now you do that, Johnny. All right, sure. Yeah, I may not talk too good, Johnny, but when it comes to using the old noodle, a New York boy like me has it all over the yokels from any other part of the country, and that's a fact. So what kind of case you got down here, huh? I haven't the least idea. Oh, now don't give me that, Johnny. No, it's a fact. Okay, okay. You keep it a secret if you want. I don't blame you. I guess it's part of your business. But I'll try and keep an eye on you, Johnny. And when you need my help, you just let me know, okay? Okay, Bernie. Okay. George Caldwell was still in his office, and we got to the point right away. Yes, I checked the airline schedule, Mr. Dollar, found out how late you would arrive, and figured I had better stay around. Well, tell me, uh, have you found out any more about what's bothering this Dr. Melcher? Well, I uh, phoned the laboratories to tell him you were on your way, but it seems he was suddenly called to Washington and may not be back until quite late tonight. Mm -hmm. However, his secretary, a Miss Mona Littlewolf, said that she would wait for him. Little Wolf? Yes, uh, she's a Philadelphia girl. Part Indian, I understand. Oh, I see. Well, I suppose I'd better grab a taxi and get on out to the laboratories. I would think it advisable. And the man behind the wheel of the taxi that just happened to be waiting out front? My pal, Bernie again. 
Melcher Laboratories, huh? Must be real important, Johnny. I wouldn't know. Well, I do. And they got more government secrets going on at that place, you know, man and space and all that caper. Oh? Hey, hey, is that what you come down here to investigate something like that? Bernie, I told you I wouldn't know. Okay, okay, okay. But when you need me, Johnny, you just holler. I'll be around. I'm sure you will. That secretary, Mona Little Wolf, it was worth the trip to Meridian. About five, three, or four, with jet black hair and an olive complexion that was out of this world. Dark eyes that didn't miss a thing, but said plenty. And when you talk about two people who click on the spot, brother, this was it. It was first names right off the bat, and I felt perfectly willing to forget about Dr. Melcher and all his problems and give my time to her. And, uh, she kind of gave me a reason to think she felt the same. Oh, now, stop. <laughs> Flatterer. Well, how do you keep that beautiful tan sitting around in an office all day? I told you. I'm part Indian. One of the few 1,000% Americans left around here. Mm. That explains the last name, Little Wolf. Mm-hmm. And you're sure your name isn't really Johnny Big Wolf? Oh, Mona, you cut me to the quick. <laughs> uh, tell me, uh, when will Dr. Melcher be back? His last wire, it came in about an hour ago, said not until morning mm. that I should tell you to wait for him. You know what it is that he wants to see me about? You know something? What? I am his own private personal secretary. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know what goes on around this place, what he's developing or working on or anything. It's the eeriest thing, working here and not knowing what it's all about. Well, I'm sorry I had to keep you waiting then. I'm not. Johnny... You know something? I'm not either. <laughs> Good. The only trouble is I'm going on a vacation tomorrow. Oh. And I'm going to be tied down here with your boss. Oh, no. Look, uh, as long as I have until morning before he gets back. While the cat's away? Why not? Must be all sorts of ways to spend a pleasant evening here in Meridian. With you along. Why not? <laughs> I fully expected pal Bernie in his taxi was still waiting outside, and uh, after some snide comments on how fast I work and how well I pick him, he drove us back to town. I dropped her off at her apartment, then registered at the Lamar Hotel, showered, shaved, then picked her up and we proceeded to do the town. This time, by some miracle, without Bernie around. It was something after three o'clock in the morning by the time Mona and I helped close up the last nightclub on her list then went out to the nearly vacant street to look for a cab. A uh, taxi. Cut. Oh, awesome. oh, what a wonderful evening, Johnny, darling. Mona, have you looked? It's morning. <laughs> then the morning's wonderful. You're wonderful. <laughs> Everything is wonderful. Uh, Mona, are you sure you want to go away on that vacation? Mm-mm. <laughs> But I'm afraid I bear. But why? Truth, Johnny? The truth. You? I'd better kind of get away and think about you and me. On another day or two. You want a taxi, mister? Oh, yeah, sure. I didn't want to disturb you and the lady, but here you are, sir. All right, thank you. Want it? Yes. I... Get away, mister. I'll help her in. Wait a minute now. Get in, lady. Oh. Just a minute. And stay in there and shut up. Oh. Now, look. No, you don't. Oh, no? Ah. And just to make sure, mister. Yes. A number of years ago, it was said that in spite of the large population of this planet, men and women remain the most inaccessible things on it. Today, we see this lack of understanding among peoples of the world reflected in headline stories. But it isn't because the people of the world are enemies. All people want to be friends. Long before the termination of World War II, Reverend Eugene Wood, a Methodist minister from Oceanside, California, went into a Scottsdale, Arizona camp where German prisoners of war were interned and offered his services to the imprisoned men. Among other things, Reverend Wood taught the men English, and he taught them about the United States of America. 
During the following years, after the men had been repatriated to their native Germany, nearly half of the internees corresponded frequently with Reverend Wood. Those men expressed a unique understanding of the people and the country of the United States of America. This great feeling of friendship and understanding prompted the minister to make a pilgrimage to Europe to seek out the men he had befriended in the prisoner of war camp in Arizona. This gesture on Reverend Wood's part gained him a fantastic welcome everywhere he went. In all the places he visited, he spread the gospel of love and friendship and had it returned to him. There were no enemies, only men with the love of freedom, the right of all men, everywhere. I came to in my own bed at the Lamar Hotel, and working over me with a wet towel in one hand and a bottle of bourbon in the other was Bernie the Cabby. That a boy, Johnny Powell, you're coming around all okay. Bernie. Hey, hey, you want another slug of this here now, baby? No, no, thanks, Bernie. I thought you was going to need my help around this bay. Oh, boy, wow. sure lucky I was cruising around late last night. I seen you laying there in front of that fancy saloon. Boy, was you a call like a fish. Bernie, what time is it? Well, it's almost 9 a.m. in the morning. Now, you oh. lay still. I'll call. I'll have some breakfast sprung up. No, here, no, boy. I... No. Hey, some good, strong coffee, boy. You hey, let me have like that you... phone, will what, what? Now, listen, Johnny, pal, you better just relax. Hello. Now, Hello, now, operator. Johnny. Operator. call was to Mona's apartment. No answer. But why that attack on us? And the kidnapping of Mona? The few nice jewels she'd been wearing? Hardly. I asked Bernie if he'd seen the taxi. Well, I, I seen a car pulling away, Johnny, but no taxi. Well, now that you mention it, maybe it wasn't. You sure tore up the street getting away, too. And, Johnny, it looks to me like somebody got wise to your being here on whatever kind of a job you're working on. And they figured they'd better stop your clock. You may be right, but why carry off Mona? Well, because they maybe thought she was working with you. And, and now they know you don't dare make a move if you don't want her getting hurt. Well, that makes sense, I guess. So maybe I'd better call up the police. Huh? Wait a minute. Easy now, Johnny. You just lay there and let me open it. You got a gun? Yeah, right here. Okay, you keep me covered. You ready? Ready. Yeah. I have beg your pardon. It's Who are you? Inside, buddy. And start I talking. Who are you? I... Just start talking. Wait a minute, Bernie. Uh, are you Mr. Dollar? That's right. Oh, thank goodness. I, I am Dr. Melcher. Oh, say, Doc, I'm sorry. But, but uh, what is going on here? Well, that's exactly what I'd like to know, Doctor. And, uh, what has happened to you, Mr. Dollar? Bernie. Yeah, Johnny. Don't call in the police. Not yet. Anything you say, Johnny. See if you can find somehow what happened to the girl. What happened to Mona? Mona? If anything really did. Check with all your driver pals all over town. If anybody's likely to have seen her, they are. You're right, Johnny. A hockey is better than all the cops in town when it comes to right. checking. Right. Now, go ahead. Circulate around. Put it on your meter, and I'll pay the bill. And, well, and if I get a lead on her, should I bring her here? No. Don't even let her know. Just call me. If I'm not here, I'll be at the doctor's laboratory. Now, go ahead. Yes, sir, Johnny. You leave it to me. All right, now, doctor. Tell me what it is that... You wanted me down here for... Oh, but it is too late. It has already been stolen. Been stolen? What has? Well, I, 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 I'll tell you what I can about it. You see, it is highly classified. I, I'll, I'll tell you in a moment. What have you said? The, the point is that for some days now, I've suspected that someone was trying to get hold of it. Yes? Yes, the vault, the temperature-controlled vault in which I've kept it. You see, no one else has worked on this formula but me. Formula for what, sir? I found the vault had been tempered with. I didn't dare to call the police because of the secrecy involved, but, but perhaps I should have called in the FBI, but I sent for you because I knew that you... you oh, but you are too late now, Mr. Dollar. When I got back from Washington, I, I got there this morning. It was gone. The formula? Uh, no, 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 no. The product itself. And unless it is found within two or three days at the most... But now I suppose I... I'd better tell you what it is. Yes, Doctor. I think maybe you'd better. Believe me, what Dr. Melcher told me is classified. I can only tell you it has to do with... 
Well, a sort of experimental fuel he's been working on. Well, what's more, Mr. Dollar, this, this substance is not only very powerful, but extremely unstable. Unless carefully controlled, temperature and pressure are maintained constantly. An explosion, Doctor? Uh, Something like that? A most devastating explosion would take place. Not when it is perfected, you understand. Now, that is what I, what I am working on. But in its present form, the form in which it was stolen. Why would it be stolen? Ah, full knowledge of it could be worth millions. You mean to a foreign power? To anyone, anyone working in this field. But don't you see, whoever stole it does not know the sample he took is incomplete, is imperfect, is terribly, terribly dangerous. Within a matter of a day or two... You simply got to find it, Mr. Dollar. Listen, did you tell anyone that I was coming here? Uh, no, no one. Except, of course, Mr. Colwell at the insurance company. But no one else? Uh, no one else. Absolutely no one. But she told me she had orders to wait around for me. She? Yes, Mona. But, oh, but I... So, obviously, the attack on her was only a fake, a cover-up. Oh, no, Mr. Dollar. I, I have a sneaking suspicion that when we find her, we'll find this... What we're looking for. Oh, but I can't believe it. Mona. You said it's worth a million dollars, didn't you? Millions. All right, she knew I was coming because Caldwell phoned your office yesterday. And she must have figured out why. That girl's got a brain, Doctor. She knew then that she'd have to act fast. She and whoever's working with her, like the man who tried to kill me last night. Tried to kill you? Yes, it was her idea to go to that particular nightclub. It was a rendezvous with that goon. Now it all ties up. Hello? Here's the word on it, Johnny. Yes, Bernie? I got it from one of the drivers waste the depot in the bus station. Yes, Furthermore, he's known that dame for years. Yes, Bernie, go on. I mean, he's seen her around. He's had her for a fair, so there's no mistake about it. Where is she? Took off on a bus with a heavy suitcase with her. Took off to where? Bought a ticket to Philadelphia. Philadelphia? That's right. But now, Johnny... All right, Bernie, thanks. Caldwell said she came here from Philadelphia. Doctor, I'll see you later. Where are you going, Mr. Dollar? The airport. Airport? That's right. Oh, but I'm afraid I don't... But you must understand the danger, Mr. Dollar, if that substance is not found. No time to talk about it, Doctor. I've got to get out to that airport and fast. Democracy that has always provided the greatest opportunity for every man to have an equal chance to work where he wishes, doing the kind of work he can do best. There is opportunity in a democracy... For every man, if he wants to work hard enough to advance professionally and socially in many facets of a complex and interesting life, there is also opportunity in a democracy for every man to worship his God in his own way. Democracy is opportunity. And free opportunity in a democracy gives mankind its greatest legacy of freedom. Expense account item four, two dollars for a cab. Not Bernie's, couldn't wait for him. A cab to the airport. Item five, 3045, plane ticket to Philadelphia, PA. But before taking off, I called the office of the bus line, talked to the manager, and gave him specific instructions about a checkup on all passengers who'd cleared for the city of brotherly love that morning about where and how to contact me. Then I jumped aboard the plane and we took off. When I got to Philadelphia, I enlisted the aid of my old pal, Lieutenant Harry Langley, of the police department. He went to work immediately, but then, nearly 24 hours later... Nothing, Johnny, nothing. I checked that bus line from stem to stern at every station between Ridley and Miss and here. Mm. Well, it's the Philadelphia Miss I'm interested in. And don't forget, when that bus line manager called you here, he said he had no record of any long-trip ticket any Mona Little Wolf to begin with. Well, then she must have used another name. Yeah, when he said the only through ticket to here was bought by a man? Well, maybe by that henchman of hers. The cab driver back then meant the ticket was bought for her. And, Johnny, I've had good men at the railroad stations and the airport, too, just in case. All of them with a perfect description of her. I don't think she's coming here. Hmm. Lieutenant, can you think of a... a better place to hide out than a big city like this? Hmm, some out-of-the-way small town. Yeah, I suppose so. Of course, a ticket. Of course, Philadelphia was pretty small when I was born in it. You know, only a couple of hundred people. <laughs> What's a gag? No gag. When I was born in Philadelphia, that's exactly what the population was, about 200. What? That was in uh, Philadelphia, Indiana. 
What'd you say? Sure, my old hometown, Philly, Indiana. Wait a minute, Lieutenant. Wait a minute. You didn't blink it right here, and PA was the only Philadelphia, did it? Lieutenant, if there's one more Philadelphia, maybe there's more than one more. I wouldn't know. Come on, get me a handful of maps, an atlas, anything. And the other one? The third Philadelphia in these United States? Not 40 miles north of where I'd started from, north of Meridian, Mississippi. And that's where Mona had gone with that deadly explosive with her. Airfare back to Meridian, 3045, then 50 bucks deposit there on a rental car. I raced north and west on Route 19 up in Neshoba County, part of Mississippi's Indian country, where Mona Little Wolf could be sure of finding protection among her friends. On a side road a couple of miles short of Philadelphia, parked 100 yards in front of what was apparently an abandoned farmhouse, Bernie slumped down, sound asleep behind the wheel of his taxi. Bernie, wake up. Wake up. Uh, 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 what goes on here? Hey, holy mother, what took you so long? What are you doing here? I told you, didn't I? My pop seen a buy a bus ticket up here to Philadelphia. Where you been? Don't ask. But listen, when you didn't show, I come on up here myself. Good see? boy. And I found out that her and that goon, his name is Willie Bigtooth, he's a bad one. They're inside of this busted down old farmhouse. See it? They're inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and me, I've been sitting here watching it so as they couldn't make a break until you got here. What a solid day of it, Johnny. When I'm taking pot shots, I mean... I... Holy, you see what I mean? Come on, get around the other side of the cab. You ain't kidding, but I'm glad he's a lousy shot. He or she. Mona! Mona Little Wolf, do you hear me? She hears it all right. Go away, Johnny. Go on away. You and that crazy cab driver. No, listen to me, Mona. That stuff you stole from the lab. Leave it there and get out, Mona. It'll kill you. Sorry, Johnny. A bluff like that won't work. I'm not bluffing, Mona. That stuff is explosive. Now leave it. Get away from there before it's too late. What? Too late for what, Johnny? You don't realize the danger in the stuff you have there. All I know is it's worth a fortune, Johnny, darling. Mona, listen to me. And if you think... Can't get out of here after dark. She's right, Johnny. Mona! You're forgetting. We have Indian blood in us. Get out of there, Mona. Get away. Yes, darling. Get away from what? Holy Toledo. comments on this case? Why bother? Expense account total, including a mitful for good old faithful Bernie. Four eighty-five seventy-five. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar is written by Jack Johnstone, produced and directed by Bruno Zorato Jr., musical supervision by Ethel Huber. Johnny Dollar is played by Mandel Kramer. Also featured in our cast were Mason Adams as Bernie, Arthur Cole as Dr. Melcher, Rita Lloyd as Mona Littlewolf, Martin Blaine as Lieutenant Langley. Be sure to join us next week, same time, same station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is Stuart Metz speaking. Johnny Dollar has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.